Hello, good morning, welcome to New Forest Morphs. Jared and I are together this morning. The salmon season is just about over. We've had a fantastic um, session, haven't we, Jared, over the season? But it's also good now to be back into the facility to see how everything's doing. Jared's been looking after quite a lot of the animals while I've been away. And we're just going to give an update on how things are going. So we'll talk, we're going to be, we've got one last female that's going to be giving us a clutch and we'll do a quick ultrasound on her. I think she's due in a couple of weeks, Jared, to see how the eggs are. And we'll also give you an update on the babies. Jad, how are the babies doing that we've had so far? The yeah, new Savannah well. Clutch. All good. Yeah. They're eating and. Yeah, so we'll do a quick update on how they're doing. We're also going to give you an update on all the girls that are giving us eggs. I think they're all back on food now and they all seem to be getting back into condition. So that's part of our video today. And also, we've got one or two snakes that we're going to be showing off which didn't go this year, which are building nicely for next season. And that will be the Dream School Project, the Desert Ghost Project and also we will look at one of our big clown projects that we're doing gravel clown projects so we've got quite a lot to cover today so first of all jared let's get out mo let's um see how our eggs are doing and then we'll move on to the babies and then we'll go through that so do you want me to take the camera sure. or should i take mo out okay right let's just uh see how she's doing so this is a uh 66 percent possible pet for pied that we want to prove out. She's locked with our cinnamon boy, which is the cinnamon pie, who's in shape at the moment, and that's Elvis. But let's just have a little wee look at her and see how she's doing, Jared. And there she is. So she's given us her pre lay shed, and we just want to just check to see how big her eggs are. So, shall I just take the camera, Jared, where you just check her follicles, see how big they are? Now you bred her, she's three years old isn't she now? She was your, one of your first babies that you ever bred. Um, and she's a little bit shy, a little bit nervous, but um, hopefully she's carrying the pie gene. Let's have a look at the screen. And we'll have a look at the screen as well. Let's see if you can see any the eggs there, Jack. I'm going to be low down. Okay, I'll come around this side. There we go. So you've got the eggs there. You can see they're a good size. Shall I freeze the screen or? Yeah. To white circle and Yeah, shall I freeze that and we'll measure? Yeah. So if we freeze, and then we can do a little measurement and just see how big We want them to be about 35 to 40 mil is what we'd like. But um, we'll measure those up. It might be that she's going to give us a small clutch jar, smaller eggs, first time mum. I know that or Celeste, a slug. or it could be a slug even, so she might be giving us slugs, which would be pretty depressing. But uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just measure them to see how big they are and uh, hope that she's going to give us a healthy clutch. But, um, right, let's see if I can measure up. So, let me just get to measure. Is it set, Jan? I guess set. So it's quite hard doing both together. You go distance, set. And then we go on to the egg size. Now, do you want to video while I try and do this? Or do you want to you measure, Jad, and I'll, I'll video? So we clicked it already? I've clicked the distance now, so it's just a question of getting in the right position. It looks like a boob egg to me. Mm. Does it look like a boob egg to you? Yeah, it's 23.7. So mm. I've got a feeling it's it's really weird because when we measured um, we measured them about a month ago. So then what measurement have you got, Jack? But they it might be that we're going to end up here with a, a clutch of slugs. I mean, hopefully not, but <laughs> um, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But so, so the last egg that we did was thirty-six point six. Thirty-six point six. 
tent there. Unless we're looking at them at a different angle, maybe. You no, know? I reckon we maybe saw a different one that was bigger. Maybe she's got a collection of big, healthy eggs and a couple of slugs as well in there, and you picked up the slug there. Yeah. Anyway, that's something that will be due in a couple of weeks, so we'll just have to see what we get there. But it's not looking that promising, is it, Joe? <laughs> anyway, we'll wait and see what happens. But let's just um, have a look and see how our babies are doing from the Savannah Clutch. They've had two meals, Joe. What are you feeding them? They're on rat fluffs at the moment. Rat fluffs. So let's just bring out the Savannah. See how he's doing. He's uh, in preferring the paper rather than the hide. And isn't he just beautiful, Jared? Lovely looking animal. Starting to put on a little bit of weight now. And he seems to have a nice temperament. Looking good. So that's really good. And we had seven babies, was it, Chad? Yeah. And have every single baby started to eat now? Yeah, eating. everyone's eating. So they had two meals. And they don't need assist feeding, they're all looking good. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've also got a couple of um, last year's hatchlings that we've decided to put on Morph Market, but we thought we'd give uh, our viewers the first opportunity. So it was on the purple hatching clutch, and I'll bring one of them out, and they're both pretty similar. And uh, we just recently put them on Morph Market. If anyone's interested in the Purple Passion Project, these are 100% het for Ultramel. You can see they're quite um, bulky now. I think they're about 230 grams. And you can see that their patterns are gonna st will get brighter and brighter. Can you see the patterns, Jared, coming through? Mm -hmm. On the Purple Passion's got the Purple Passion head, lovely blue eye, they're part of the Bell Complex. So that's made up of Phantom and Mojave. And it's 100% het for ultra male because the father was uh, Titus, who is a Mojave ultra male visual boy. And beautiful animal. It won't take long. For, and they're both boys, aren't they? So we're yep. selling two boys here. If you <coughs> want to either contact Jared on Instagram or send us a message on Facebook. They're on Morph Market as or well. on Morph Market, so you've got that option as well. Or you can leave a message on YouTube if you're interested. Please hit us up and uh, good to go. So lovely, healthy animals, nice and strong. And the feeding, Jared, are they feeding well? Yeah. And what are you feeding them? They're on wieners at the moment. So they're on wieners? But they also take Maltese as well. Yeah. Depends what they want that day. Yeah, okay. They're not so picky. We've got two. Other way around. We've got two of those, so let's just put it in this way. Um, and the other one is over here. You see it's very similar. I'll just show you the other one. Let's have a wee look. Likes to hide. And there you go, beautiful purple passion. Lovely purple head. Beautiful blue eyes. And that one's again about 230 grams. And uh, yeah, feel free to hit us up on those two. Um, I've also put up some other ones on Morph, on Morph Market that the yeah. animal might be interested in. Het Pies, Het Clowns, Het Ultra Males. So we've got Het Pies, Het Clowns, Het Ultra Males all available on Morph Market. Some of them have got cinnamon in. So please have a, good, have a look at those if you want to make us an offer on any snakes. Please feel free to uh, drop us a line. And then the next thing I want to do is give you an update on the girls that have given us the clutches. But before we do that, Jared, you can see that we've got quite a lot going on in the incubator here. We've got a lot of eggs coming out in August. Um, and the next clutch, I think, is due on the 7th of August, which is only about a month away now. Um, we've, we checked the temperatures. Well, in the UK now, we've had a, a heat wave this week. Temperatures have gone up to 33, 34 out, outside and they're saying it could go up as high as 38 by the end of the week. So we all need to kind of keep a focus on our temperatures in our facilities because the one thing we don't want to do is have, end up with our eggs overheating, getting a heat spike, and then we start losing the embryos. So what we tend to do is uh, we do a daily check on our temps. Jad did a double check yesterday because it was quite hot. You came in, what, two or three in the afternoon and the temperatures were holding fine? About four o'clock, yeah. Four o'clock. So the, hot, the heat in the day in the UK is about five o'clock in the evening is when you're going to get your maximum temps. We're also finding that the humidity is going through the roof uh, with this weather, isn't it, Jared? Because mm -hmm. we're using these two um, humidifiers and we normally set them on quarter dial here. So quarter dial, and then what happens is the whole tank will be used within a 24 hour period and we change them every day and we pump the water vapor into the air. So we don't actually use individual um, coca husk 
dropped up and down we actually create the atmosphere in the air and they just are all shedding really well even the big girls are shedding really well we find it's very effective um, but we did find yesterday we came in Jared and it was 70 was it 70 70 percent humidity which is probably the top end of where we want to be um, we like it to be between 60 and 70 but the snakes are loving it and we'll show you a few snakes because they are just loving these this, these conditions but um, let's give a quick update on the girls so toast gave us our first clutch this year look how well reconditioned she's come back into condition she's 2.5 kilograms she dropped down to about 1.8 so she's probably put on about four or five hundred grams Jared, in the last four months 100 grams a month is what we aim for with these big girls and hopefully she'll be good to go for next season now the other one that i wanted to show you was the pringle now she's taken her first meal within a week of giving us a clutch let's have a quick look and see how she's doing she's our latest mum and she still looks quite thin but at least she's feeding and that's a really good sign from them mm, feeding she's at least two she's had two meals yeah so she's had two meals so far and again we're gently easing them back on maltese and then we'll take them from maltese up to small rats so the idea is that you don't shock them into a big meal straight away you give them something mm. which is easy to digest get the digestive juices going and uh we are still sticking with feeding every two weeks as well, which is working really well, working mm -hmm. well for our budget as well, but working well for the for the welfare of the snakes. The babies uh, are once a week, but the yeah. adults are twice. Yeah, uh, we do week. once a week for the, for the hatchlings, and we do every two weeks. So Celeste, she's had at least three meals now, I think. Let's see how she's doing. So she's starting to put on weight again. She seems happy in her hide. So... You've always got to be very delicate with the mothers. They've been through quite an experience giving us a clutch and it's a bit of TLC required for the next six months and then we monitor them carefully before we even decide to put them back into the breeding rotation. They've got to be really healthy and really strong before we even consider breeding with them again. And the other ones that we've got, Jared, so we've also had a clutch from Money Penny. Let's see how she's doing. She's had about four meals. She's given us the double het ghost pie clutch, which we're really looking forward to. That's due mid-August, but she looks in great condition. Oh, she's doing well. I'm really pleased. She's given us the strongest clutch this year, I believe. Really big, healthy eggs, very strong veins. So it's interesting how the het to hets, even though you're risking the odds, they tend to give you strong animals for some reason. I don't know what it is about hets. So mm. never underestimate the power of a het. I don't know whether it's because hets tend to be, yeah, I don't know whether they just are stronger genetically, I don't know, but seems to be working well and the other one we've got is uh, Athena who's our pied, beautiful big pied girl that's given us a clutch she's back on food and had at least four meals let's see how she's doing and she looks pretty good yeah she's already getting nice and chunky again she's nice and chunky so hopefully she'll be recovered for next season but we shall keep an eye on her lovely animal so there's an update I think on all the mums that we've had so far uh, did I miss anyone, Jared? No. Nope. So what I wanted to do now was actually just give you an update on the projects that didn't go for us. Now, this is the reality of the ball python hobby, is that you've got all these wonderful plans, you've got all these girls that you think are all up to size, you've got the boys up to size producing sperm. You put them together and you're hoping for these beautiful clutches, and they don't always happen. But they absorb their eggs, and they have. Some of them have absorbed their follicles, and that's a decision that the state makes, not necessarily an issue that we've got, but... What I'm thinking here is that when Toast absorbed her eggs, Jared, on the, her follicles on the first season, it was disappointing for you at the time. But she's, since then, she's given us back-to-back -back clutches, and they've all been big nine and ten egg clutches. So what our theory is that nature has its own way of absorbing those eggs or those follicles to strengthen the female ready to go for future seasons. So it's not always bad news if your projects don't go when you want them to go. Sometimes that extra year will actually be a blessing in disguise and you end up not only getting a small, a larger clutch, you end up getting a healthier animal out of it as well, which will give you back-to-back -back clutches. So I do think sometimes it's a blessing in disguise and the animals often know better to delay the breeding process to when they are bigger and stronger so that they can produce healthier clutches and bounce back and recover a lot better. So this is something that we're learning ourselves. So this is one of our projects that we were so excited about that we jagged. We wanted to produce a gravel clown. This is Mango, and she absorbed her eggs, her follicles. She had four locks with um, your skip boy, who is a gravel 100% head old uh, clown. He's pastel as well. 
Annie Pastel, she's Pastel, she's a Pastel Lesser Clown, I think. Mm -hmm. But beautiful animal, beautiful green eye, very strong. She's and a big girl. She's a big girl. She's about 2.5 kilograms, Jared. So by the time we get to the next season, she could be close to three. Very like, very much like toast, and then hopefully give us a really strong clutch. Mm, that'd be nice. So that's one of our uh, future projects that Jared and I are both looking forward to. But it's just a patience game and keeping ball pythons nothing's guaranteed you just got to be patient but once you get past the third year things start to get exciting and we're starting to get more and more excited now with jared with our projects and the other one i wanted to show you was the dreamsicle project now this is peach and i'll bring her out on the table jared and show you how she's doing she has got a lovely temperament and she is such a beautiful animal and she's about 2.5 kilograms she has absorbed her follicles too. Now just look how beautiful that animal is Jared. So she's coming up, this is the year three for her, so she's two and a half years of age. So even though she was physically big enough, she wasn't necessarily ready to give us that clutch for this year, but hopefully next year she will be. And you can just see how beautiful her patterns are and her colours. She's holding those bright oranges even into two and a half to three years of age. So. She's a lovely girl, beautiful temperament, and eats so well. She's never missed a meal, has she? No. So, very blessed to have high quality. And the original stock came from Justin Kabelka, who sold his stock to a local breeder that we bought from. And we know that that's coming from the Justin Kabelka line at Kinova. So we know it's gonna be high quality, high end. I'll just show you her husband, and then we'll probably pretty much call it a wrap for the day. Um, and the husband, Jared, is Bowser. I was going to show you the Desert Ghost project as well, but I'll just show you the Bowser boy. Now you'll see the lavender albino pie. Albino. Albino, albino. <laughs> I've been watching too many, too um, many American. Canadian American videos. But the albino, we call it albino in England. We got just this from David Russian. David Russian, yeah, top breeder in, in the UK. Got good connections with Justin and he bought the dream school project from Justin but just look at in his age two and a half years of age he's weighing in about 1300 grams we've got him on a diet at the moment we think that we're going to get him leaner and meaner for the breeding season to go but he's got a lovely temperament as well beautiful animal and just look at the colors of the lavenders Jack you can see the oranges and yellows and purples mm -hmm. all coming through you can see why they're called dream schools absolutely it's amazing beautiful. in real life it's even more vibrant yeah but lovely lovely animal so hopefully we'll be able to use him in our breeding projects going forward from october this year onwards and then the last one i want to give you an update on is our desert coast enchi girl and she is in lovely temperament her name is uh, isla and she is eating really well she is um, putting on some lovely weight lovely temperament always wants to come out and play and she's really enjoying these lovely conditions that we've got here. Just look how beautiful her colours are going, Jan. Isn't she just lovely? So that is our Inchi Desert Ghost. And we bought her two years ago from um, Marco at uh, Van Haren Reptiles, BHP. And uh, she's doing really well, Jan. And she's a beautiful snake. I'll just bring her out and just show you how beautiful she is. There she is. And she weighs up nearly two kilograms now, Jared. So hopefully we're gonna put the clown boy uh, Hercules to her, produce some amazing double heads with lots of codons in there, super enchies, pastel, lesser, leopard, desert ghost. Well, it'll be 100% desert ghost, 100% clown, Jared, but it'll be packed full of codons. So that's a project that we are seriously looking forward to. And I just love the yellows. Look how, as she gets older, can you see how her colors are going more like beautiful, aren't they? Just so bright, even in old age. The whites, the yellows, and that lovely browny gray color. And she's just got such a lovely temperament. She's such a lovely girl, I like the head stamp. She is really, really beautiful, Jared. One of my favorite projects to look forward to. And if you look at the side patterns, you see the whites around the alien heads, how beautiful that is. So the contrast between the beautiful brownie greys and the yellows is just beautiful. 
So that is our Desert Ghost Girl and she's looking great. So looking forward to hopefully getting a clutch from her. We'll just slip her back and we've also had to do some temper adjust temperature adjusting, haven't we Jad? Where we've just been adjusting our temps because of the extra heat that we're getting and we're just twigging the heat mats to get them fine-tuned. One thing I've learned from other breeders, if you look at Hardwired Exotics latest video where Tony was very transparent with some of his breeding and he lost 10 clutches due to temperature issues and one of the things he said was that he had problems getting hold of heat mats in the US during the Covid lockdown periods and he had to wait I think an extra <coughs> four to six weeks for his heat mats so what he did is he used ambient temperature to try and hold the temperatures up and that ambient temperature was harder to control and he said it dropped down to 80 degrees while the females were gravid and because of that the temperature dropped too low for the um, embryos to grow correctly and he's ended up with major issues uh, from those girls so it's very important that we get our temps right whether it's being too low or too high and I think for us we try to keep around about 88 is a good uh, a good temperature level for us when it comes they must have availability at 88 and maybe come into the cool spot between 82 and 88 so that gives them that range for I think is the safe zone but of course your ambient temperature affects, affects how the mats are operating also affects the height and the, the where where your where your thermostats are based as well and a lot of variation can occur so we have to keep an eye since we've had these new controllable habitat thermostats in a lot of it has been a lot easier to control number one I can get to the controls easier was before we had them at the very back and I couldn't mm. reach them so now I can tweak them which makes it with my hip issue it makes it easier for me to get to so making sure your thermostats are easily accessible is important and I think the other thing is that thermostats can go wrong and heat mats can go wrong so for example we've got one at the moment you can see this one here looks like it's really low but this thermostat's been playing up I've had to dial it in and get it right so it looks as though it's a lot lower than the other ones but in reality the thermostat and the heat mats on this particular side aren't perfect so I've had to twig at that to get it right and I think now I've done that I'm feeling a lot more comfortable my, my females are in the right spaces so that's good and Bowser who's our we've got a massive project for him next year he's here Bowser Bowser not Bowser Hercules who's our multi clown boy I was worried that he was on the heat spot too much because obviously you want to protect his sperm going forward for the future but if I bring him out and I've checked his temperature um, and I'd like to give um, Rob a, a shout out he put out a really nice video on temperature controls and how the animals can also regulate their own temperatures to a certain degree um, and um, if you go to Rob Barraclough Royal Bulls um, he's put out a really good video on some of the science behind temperatures well worth a look at um, but I've had a look at how um, Hercules is doing and he's doing really well um, but I had to twig his temperatures because he was sitting on the hot spot quite a lot and I made um, and this morning when I came in he was cooling off which is good the one thing I don't want him to do is to overheat and destroy any sperm that he's building inside there I want that sperm to be protected and I think you've got to keep an eye on temperatures because when it goes over 32 you can um, kill the sperm and therefore be firing blanks so it's really important to keep an eye on all your temperatures and protecting your future males going forward as well as your females to make sure that they're all good to go for the next season so we'll end on Hercules this beautiful beautiful snake of ours that we've got going is there anything you wanted to add at all Jared? No. So thank you very much for watching we'll try and put out more content um, hopefully we'll have some egg cutting videos soon coming in August so something to look forward to and thank you very much for your love and support and we shall catch you next time bye bye for now